Good morning, motivators. Interesting story for you. Back in 2018, I was training with time efficiency in mind. Like a lot of you, I really didn't have time back then to train more than about 10 hours a week. What I ended up focusing on was a lot of really low intensity, but then a lot of really high, like 15 to 60 second bursts. During that year, I went from a half Ironman time of around five hours in 2017 to 4.36 at the World Championships for the 70.3 distance, all while training an average of less than about nine hours a week. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but there was a ton of research backing up those super high intensity intervals. And I know for a fact, that probably around 70% of you aren't doing them or aren't doing them enough. Let me explain. So a couple months back, I put out on the YouTubes here, a couple of questions trying to find out how your training for the intense sharp stuff goes. What you told me is that what duration intervals do you focus on when you're not training for a race specifically? What you told me is that 76% of you do intervals one minute or longer. And then when you are training for a race, 78% of you focus on intervals of one minute or longer. Only 22% of you do 15 to 60 second intervals when you're preparing for a race. And 23% of you focus on intervals of 15 to 60 seconds when you're not preparing for a race. It's really kind of the same. What I see is that everyone's kind of just doing the same sorts of intervals year round, basically. This isn't surprising at all because our nature as endurance athletes is like more suffering, harder and longer, and as long as you can withstand the pain, the better you're going to be, but maybe not necessarily so. I wanna share with you some research about how beneficial these short intervals can be. Just four studies here that I'm going to share. The effects of high intensity interval training versus sprint interval training, so this is like that one to eight minute versus the 15 to 60 second interval on anthropomorphic measures like body composition and cardiorespiratory fitness, what we are trying to train in healthy young women. And the takeaway was in the HIT and the SIT groups, HIT is the one to eight minute, SIT is the super short, super intense. They both improved respectively in their VO2 max with no significant difference between the two. So the cardiovascular fitness between the two ended up improving roughly the same, a little bit better in the super intense intervals. But this is the interesting part, the sum of skin folds reduced for both the HIT and SIT groups respectively with greater reduction for SIT compared to HIT. So the SIT, the super high intensity interval training people ended up losing more body fat than the HIT training. This is a really big thing because body composition is very closely linked to predicting race outcomes. This next article here, sprint interval training burned 40% more fat than HIT in 60% less time. A couple of the key findings were that sprint interval training versus high intensity interval training sit resulted in basically a 40% higher reduction in body fat percentage than hit. Sit significantly outperformed hit in body fat percentage reduction while requiring almost 61% less time spent exercising and sit participants spent 81.46% less time sprinting in comparison to time spent doing high intensity intervals of hit. Less suffering, less time spent training, more of a reduction in body fat doing these super high intense intervals. Third study, I promise these ones are gonna be worth it. Sprint interval running and continuous running produce training specific adaptations despite a similar improvement of aerobic endurance capacity, a randomized trial of healthy adults. I wanted to look and see if this was just for cyclists or runners and what it found was both groups, the hit and the sit, demonstrated similar improvements of several performance measures, including VO2 max, but sprint performance was better after sit, the super intense intervals. However, the continuous training caused train-specific adaptations at sub-maximal intensities. 
the continuous training, typically those longer intervals that you mentioned that you do more often, those are better for the submaximal efforts. But that's not to say that the super high intensity intervals aren't very important because that actually is a better predictor of race performance than VO2 max itself. Your top end speed is a really big indicator of how well you're going to do in a race. So they're both important. Finally, does this actually translate to already trained adults or is this just taking people off the couch? Well, the final study, six sessions of sprint interval training improves running performance in trained athletes, the already trained athletes. Conclusion was sprint interval training in the field significantly improved 3000 meter run time to exhaustion, peak power, average power in trained trail runners, sprint interval training in the field is a time efficient and cost free means of improvement improving both endurance and power performance in trained athletes. And these are just four studies that I put together to show sort of the bulk of the information and the gist of what we're getting at for these super high intense 15 to 60 second intervals. But the overall benefits are better weight management, reduced body fat percentage, similar speed gains, more time spent at a lower HR, so you're getting all of these benefits without such a big high load on your body because the intervals are typically like 30 seconds on, four minutes off, so your heart rate comes down a lot more than it does during the rest periods of those long intervals. There's less time suffering, you're not spending three quarters of a hard workout just grinding it out, hoping you can finish. Perception of pain becomes lower with these super high intense intervals. Your efficiency rises, so your body uses less energy for the same effort levels. Your top end speed is greater, which is that nice predictor of your race performance and neuromuscular firing happens quicker, which for us age groupers who spend a lot of time moving really, really slow, making sure that our fast twitch muscle fibers can work well is a really big benefit. Does this mean that you should switch all of your long intervals to short intervals? No, what we do in our training app is we really lean into these short intervals of 15 to 60 seconds when athletes aren't training for a specific race. We want to give a really time effective workout of anywhere between about 30 and 40 minutes with really high bursts of intensity and long rest periods, anywhere from 15 seconds on to two minutes off up to 60 seconds on to eight minutes off. And then when races come around, because of that study and that finding and just the knowledge that you have to be able to translate that speed into being able to hold it for a long time, then the intervals gradually get longer and longer. And we start focusing on longer VO2 max, one to eight minute intervals. And during the race specific kind of training sessions, longer, maybe 20 minute, 60 minute, two hour intervals for the Ironman athletes. It'll be a nice time efficient workout body composition will improve, top end speed will improve, neuromuscular firing will improve, all of those benefits will improve. So then why don't people, well, 75% of you typically don't do these types of workouts. I think it's because of that endurance sports culture that needs to change that is all about suffering you can get performance benefits with only doing like two minutes of really hard workouts in a workout, but you gotta earn the rest that comes after that. You gotta go really hard, and if you do, you'll get the benefits for it without all of that grinding suffering for 60, 90 minute workouts. If you want a train plan that includes these super high intense intervals at the right times of the year and cues you when to go really hard and when to back off and when to start changing those intervals, our app does that. You can go to app.mymotive.com, try the app for free for 14 days and if you like it, stick around afterwards where for $57 a month you get unlimited training plans, unlimited races, customize your schedule as it works for you and no matter how you want to set up your season, it's going to be designed specifically with these principles in mind. So thank you for watching Motivators, later.